So having collected our data, let's consider case study data analysis. Analyzing data is difficult and you're going to need a strategy. Case study data analysis is an undeveloped area. It's hard, you need a plan, which should be in your protocol, which is why we develop the protocol first. If you collect data first, you'll struggle to anal analyze it. it. It's really not gonna work for you. So what are the tools, formulas, etc., that can help? Well, Envivo is a great tool to help code text and then manipulate that text to show themes and trends. Uh, word clouds, if you've got a, a bunch of data, you can drop it into a word cloud tool and it'll show you the recurrent themes. Text quantification can be used to show patterns, so re repeated words, um, repeated phrases. Making matrices of the categories uh, that you see or placing evidence in the boxes of those matrices is useful. Visualizations, graphs, charts show you what's happening. Display information in chronological order or other logical schemes that you make up. Again, are good ways of showing you how things are done. These days, I, I mean, I used to use Envivo. I do tend to use Excel spreadsheets because that allows me to manipulate it, but it does require you to be pretty good at flying Excel along. So Envivo is a good place to start if you're, if you're not really good at using Excel. So three general strategies. Firstly, when you're analyzing your data, rely on the theoretical propositions. This is a strategy I advise. Design of the case is based on theoretical propositions that you found in literature and reflected on in the research questions. Findings should support, challenge or create new propositions went on based on what went before. So really you've got a proposition that something you know explains whatever it is that you're looking at and then when you find your evidence it should either support it and say yes i find the same thing it should say no i found something else or it could and, and from that you can then work and say well i found the same thing in this new context or i found it and there's a, a slight addition to explain something further or i don't find support for it and then you've got to find the reason why you can exam, examine rival propositions and then you can divide, define and test the multiple explanations for why something's happening. This links to theoretical propositions but requires use of competing or rival hypothesis or theory to explain why what you're seeing is happening. So you can then look at it in multiple ways and decide what the true explanations are. Data connection needs to include sources that challenge or support the rivals. But really, you should be doing this anyway, because if you try and publish something and there is a rival explanation you haven't thought about, then you can often guarantee that one of the reviewers will know about it and your, your work will not get published. You can develop a case description. A descriptive framework can sometimes unlock insight into a case through causal links. Descriptive case structure may be chronological, geographic, light style or, or other narrative. However you're telling the story, you're really describing in detail what you found in your case. I really like case descriptions as well. Uh, I find them really informative. And often if you start with a case description, um, you, you can unlock ideas as to what the theoretical underpinning might be uh, if that's the way your work has developed. If you want to look at specific analytic techniques, well, I always direct people to Miles and Huberman's book, Qualitative Data Analysis uh, by Sage. It's a great source of many different techniques. I'll also suggest looking for proxy papers in your target journal that perhaps have theor similar theoretical grounding or goals and see what techniques they've employed. Yin provides five potential techniques for you to consider, pattern matching, explanation building, time series analysis and logic models. Those are applicable to single or multiple cases. And then cross case synthesis, obviously that's only applicable to multiple cases. Pattern matching is a, a common way of analyzing 
data, what you do is you compare a theoretically predicted pattern or sequence with empirical data. If patterns match, you have confirmatory evidence strengthening your internal validity. If this is explanatory, patterns may relate to dependent or independent variables. Now, non-equivalent dependent variables as a pattern, what that means is an experiment or quasi-experiment may have multiple non-equivalent dependent variables. That's a fancy way of saying you've got a variety of outcomes. You need to identify the precedence, that is what comes before patterns that give specific outcomes, and rule out alternative patterns or rival explanations to make your causal inference. Again, what does that mean? It means you look at what came before, what pattern emerges in the data, and your theory needs to explain, right, if this comes before you get that pattern, if there are any other explanations, it's not valid. If an outcome isn't as predicted, you've got to revisit the theory, the explanation of why that pattern is the way it is. To really do this, you need replication. You might have theoretical replication or literal replication. So you're doing the same thing over again, ideally across multiple cases, because that aids the validity of your study. It shows that actually this is true. The key is to look for nuance, which are subtle differences. Are the cases or examples you're choosing truly the same? Any difference can lead to alternative patterns. So if they've got differences in there, you're not going to get the same pattern anyway. You have rival explanations of patterns. The aim here is to develop rival theoretical propositions that you articulate in operational terms. If one explanation of a phenomenon is valid, the others cannot be. So you've got a whole bunch of ways of explaining if this goes to that, then this is true. And then you, you rule out the others. The presence of one group of independent variables predicted by one theory precludes others predicted by rival theory. So what we're saying there is, if you've got one way of this happening, the others cannot be true. Now, you may look for simple patterns. Sometimes you may have only a small number of variables. But if you have that situation, they've got to give rise to really different patterns. So you need dramatic differences for, to allow you to compare. When we're looking for precision, well, you may or may not use quantitative or some form of statistical analysis. You might be using setting a criteria or a benchmark if X happens, sales increase by 10%. Uh, like Christmas, you might say, well, my proposition is Christmas increases sales. Well, you should see that. Um, you may be comparing statements or outcomes from interviews. Try and avoid setting too subtle an outcome as you've got to make this match. So make it strong and generic, generic and X, you know, if X happens, then you get Y. Let's look at explanation building. To explain means to stipulate causal links. Links may be complex and difficult to measure. Explanations, therefore, tends towards narratives, towards some form of storytelling. Stronger studies closely reflect your theoretical propositions. So theory proposes this and we see this in our case and we tell exactly how we see it. Again, going back to the chain of evidence work uh, earlier on. Multiple cases, therefore, appear more rigorous to reviewers because you can show repeatedly that this has happened and that leads to stronger cross case analysis. You've got to take great care with your explanation building and ensure no rival theory or alternative explanations are possible. Time series studies relate to sequences event of events that lead to an outcome. Research need to identify the necessary conditions or steps in sequence for an outcome to occur. As with most techniques, there's always overlap with pattern matching. That's fine. You just need to know where you're going to. So you might be looking for a pattern, but actually you're using time series. Simple cases may follow a single or small number of dependent or independent variables that rise or fall over time. So you see an increase in something or a decrease in something over time, and it leads to a certain event. Complex cases may have both rising and falling or even more complicated patterns over time, which lead to an outcome. Now, with time series data, you've got to identify the start and the end point over which you're measuring these variables. Um, 
that's important because you've got to test these maybe over multiple cases. Chronologies, time series data, usually leads to quite compelling narratives. People like engaging with them. Presenting event, events as they unfold in chronological order is often insightful uh, and it's it's dangerous though because you can have presumed causal events. This happened first and therefore that. So you've got to be really careful. You need to ensure that chronology is predicted by some theoretical explanation. So really think about what's the theory that explains why A goes to B. Logic models match empirically observed events to theoretically predicted events. Models are often shown as flow diagrams. We have a nice flow diagram for you to look at here. This is um, from Yin's book. Interventions by actors lead to outcomes. You may have multiple outcomes. Intermediate outcomes may lead to multiple outcomes. You can you can actually draw quite complicated flow models, but you can see you know in this example it's it's about uh, youth behaviour and possible interventions. You know, youth becomes at risk. We can see they you know do they join a gang? Do they take drugs? You know, how do these things interplay with each other? Do they enter the justice system? And what are the possible outcomes? So we can see it's this flow diagram helps with the logic. Data collection and organisation again needs to map onto the logic model to test and either support or refute this. So you can see you could do surveys or interviews, or all sorts of things looking at this particular case to prove the flow of your logic model. Look at cross case synthesis. This is where you've collected data for multiple instances. You've treated each individual case as a separate study and then you're aggregating the findings. Maybe done using qualitative or quantitative methods. Now this example here is, is an illustrative example from some of my own work um, from when's that 2008. Um, the figure shows what's called the, the UK new product introduction process for aerospace firms. What we did was we studied a whole load of different firms and there were 45 different companies and we looked at the way they introduced new products in the company. What was their new product introduction process? And having looked across all of them, we could then aggregate and say, well, generically, this is what the process looks like. These are the steps. This was very useful to see the theoretical process, but also for our partner firms. They could say, oh, we're maybe missing this bit or we do this bit differently. So it was very useful for everybody involved. We're always striving for quality in our research. Whatever your approach to case study, you need to try and get the highest quality you can. Before you start, make sure you have rigorous theoretical underpinning to the approach. All data collected and analysis frameworks theoretically underpinned and strong. This is what's going to help you get published. Ensure you have collected and examined all the data available. Don't ignore outliers or areas perceived as too difficult. Or well, you could find that you're susceptible to the alternative interpretations based on the evidence ignored. And um, there's always the, the what's called the black swan example where, you know, if you live in the northern hemisphere, well, all swans are white. But the moment you go to the southern hemisphere, well, black swans suddenly appear. That's always the problem with with this sort of you know case study data collection. There's the example that you missed recognize and address any rival interpretations directly. So if you see a potential rival interpretation of your data, write it down, examine it, explore it, pull it apart. It makes your study richer, I always think. Focus on the key issues. You may find many interesting things, but do not go what I call chasing bunnies. That is randomly running all over a field. It's interesting, but it's not going to get your paper finished. Try and focus on what it is you're trying to prove.